Um, the first question to consider is, and think about this about yourself, is how will you accept your call or how did you accept your call? Does anybody want to comment on that? Concerning yourself? Yeah. Okay, go ahead. Well, when life becomes so dark and you want to realize in your mind you, you, with, with, you know, experience of exposure to religious community, you know the only answer is somewhere where is hidden in that religious community. And, and then in that sense, we find the light a hope in what the scriptures give us. And that was then and it kind of like the, the enlightenment for a call to draw near to God. In times of, you know, just no answers of the darkness of what's in, surrounding us and people in despair. And just never understand why the people is here on this earth. What was the other question? Well, the question was, how will you accept your call, or how did you accept the call? You know, you that you got a call. Well, you it's perceived that you have a call. Oh, okay. Well, it's just a um, God uh, in the Scripture will start showing you uh, very clarity with clarity that that He has <clears throat> given you a call on your life to to evangelize. That's really the beginning to me. That's good, Jeffrey. You, you know, God uses the scripture to, to uh, call us. The, the, cost of, the beginning is always evangelism. Because you realize that you were once a lost sinner. And, and that you were uncontrollably not understanding what is wrong with me. When I try to do <clears> right, <throat> I still do wrong, as Paul says. And then an explanation of the the difference of understanding the flesh is sin and that we have sin issues until we die. We, just, we know how to overcome that through the scriptures and how they teach us to walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. So once you learn that there is a draw, I don't know if you call it a call, I think it's just a, it's a, it's a reality check from what I call it. Go ahead, I don't want to talk no more. Anybody else want to take a stab at that yourself? Concern yourself? I I don't think I could identify my call. Um, what has seems to happen is an uh, open door opens up an opportunity, and I walk through it. I don't walk through all of them, but I think that's how he's leading me. I don't I don't know still. On my journey about that. A persistence is put in my spirit. Go ahead, Shelly. Um, well, no, I know I'm prophetic, and God started showing me things and letting me see things in the spirit realm and having dreams and warnings and I'm talking about over years mm -hmm. and just all kind of things like that so like okay um, and also I think I'm more or less a Swiss Army knife type, type Christian which I do many things so mm -hmm. I just do I just be me. <laughs> right. I just do me. <clears throat> Anybody else? Smart. Well, for me, um, I love that you said the scripture because I think that even Jesus, like, got, and he was a real person, you know? He was a little boy. He was three years old at one time, <clears throat> and four years old, and five years old, and I, he was learning the word. He had to memorize, like Jack talked about when he did the rabbi teaching. But I think that sometimes, you know, the way a scripture will just jump out at you. You're mm -hmm. just maybe reading it. All of a sudden, it's just like, yeah. 
in your face. Absolutely. I think that's what it did to Jesus. It, there was scripture that prophesied the Messiah, and it came up in him and said, you're the Messiah. You know, and that's me. Yeah. And so for me, that kind of happened too early on when I first got saved. But um, I let the calling kind of lay dormant for two decades. And then at one point, I was really seeking to get my first love back. And I felt like the Lord renewed my call to ministry. And I had a vision of myself doing the call. I mean, like this, just a little picture come in my mind, an impression of seeing myself doing a certain thing. And it was the same thing as I saw when I was 19. It came back at 40. And I saw it again. And God has sent many confirmations of it. But um, a friend of mine, Patty, do you know David Bush? Mm. He's a, He grew up right here at where Kroger's. Do you know yeah. David Bush? Yeah, he's an old friend of mine. Oh, my gosh. He's, I love him. He he's so my profound. He's been ministry for 20 years. Yeah, he's so profound sometimes. Are you talking about David? Yeah. Uh, over at, we, well, his mom just lived down the street from here. He, oh, said, wow. he said, if you have a passion, mm -hmm. a strong yearning, that is God calling you to it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So if you Bush. sense inside yourself a strong, just like... It just comes up and it's just like insatiable. I got to do something about this or I got to do this. That That's a calling too. A lot of people have that to go to a mission field. They'll just feel like I have got to go to Indonesia. You know, something like that. That can be one another way God calls, calls us. Anybody else? Mm -hmm. I love something else. Okay. I had a dream one night, and it was more like a vision. This is just one of the visions I had in the dream. Um, I finally <clears throat> was seeking, Lord, is this, you know, which way do I go? What do I do? What do you want me to be? Whatever, you know. Mm -hmm. And uh, I had a dream, and it was out of Ezekiel, where the angel came. I believe an angel. I had a vision, and the angel came and wadded up some paper and put it in my mouth and said to eat this scroll. And it was the word of God, and I remember... Um, then I got the um, scripture that said, um, what, eat the scroll and then go and speak to the house of Israel. And uh, my point is I've had a lot of confirmations also. It kept me going. Mm -hmm. My mother's or what? Huh? From others, or what do you mean? From God them? can confirm stuff through the Word of God. He can confirm it any way He wants to. He can dream. dreams, visions. Right. A prophet can come to you. Um, I've had all this stuff. Um, he can he can talk to you through the TV if he wants to. I walked in one day and I was trying to go to this one church, and like I said, something's wrong there. I kept feeling something was very wrong. And I walked in my back door, and this friend was trying to get me to go to this church where I came here. I walked to my back door and turned on the TV, and it was a famous preacher on the TV. And he went, because I was like, what is it? There's something here that I just can't put my finger on. And, the, and it was like the, the guy was preaching went, mixture. There was mixture in that church, and that was coming to the, from the TV straight to me. I knew it was God, and it was mixture that was in that church, and God was telling me not to go back. Now, that, that's just wow. one of the ways God can talk to you. Well, I always felt like he led me to the church I was supposed to go to wherever I went. Because I was in the military at that time, and I just, you know, um, when I moved different places, he would show me where to go. You know, and that sort of thing. But I've had dreams and things like that and visions before, especially dealing with my kids and when um, their dad took them and things like that. So, but now... As far as what I'm supposed to do, like what am I here for at this time? Because I know I'm supposed to be here for this time. I don't, I don't know what it is, but I mean, that's, well, I'm supposed to be here. Or the enemy would have took me out a long time ago. Okay. All right. <clears throat> have you abandoned the common life? Mm -hmm. Go ahead, what do you mean? I think I, I think I have because I'm the type of person I got, I have to have the supernatural. I, some people call it the supernatural, the God stuff, the 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 visions, the dreams, the prophetic, the 
God talking to you and all that. So to just be living a life that's day to day, humdrum, go to work, come home, go to work, come home, go. That would kill me. <laughs> I mean, yeah. Just without God and his, you know. And uh, I don't try to live like the world. I don't, I don't, I, I, I just don't. Uh, politics would be an example. Big one. The politics. We're, we have a life, and but we have to transition from it being just a humdrum back and forth to work. Yeah. Buy my food, you know. Right. Stuck kind of <laughs> ordinary life. Common life, ordinary. Yeah. One that is led by the Spirit, right? Right. Life. And yeah. We're, we're supposed to be transitioning from one to the, to the other. And, mm -hmm. You know. Isn't there something? Okay. Oh. <laughs> I was thinking. Okay. Um, I can see I, the gears turning. Yeah. Go ahead, Brown. <laughs> There's a verse that says, Whom have I in heaven but you? Mm. Mm. And on earth I desire nothing but you yes and i don't want to say i'm getting older because we're all getting closer mm -hmm. <coughs> I'm getting closer and so you see as you're getting closer you're seeing things that were very very important even maybe 10 years ago um that I don't argue a lot with with people mm -hmm. because I think like this, 